For my project, I wanted to explore the idea of truths and stories that are left unknown or locked away. I was also interested in exploring an idea of suppression or oppression of these stories and memories, as I feel it engages with the theme of locked in, but also isn't too explicit and obvious. For my project, I have attempted to engage with the theme, but also developed it in a profound and compelling way by using historical aspects and a unique combination of mediums. I first focused on objects that related to the theme objectively, such as keys, and experimented with portraying them in different forms, including frotage, cyanotypes, dry point etching, digital editing, and transfers. Ultimately, I decided not to use the image of keys for my piece, as I found the image slightly too explicit and perhaps irrelevant for my idea. From this experimenting, I found the paper transfer compelling, as it created an effective aged look which fit with the historical idea I wanted to convey. On our gallery trip to Mori Art Gallery in Roppongi, I found two artists particularly inspiring for my work. First, I found Isio Chimiako's work interesting due to its mundane, nostalgic and simple imagery. In particular, the significant subtext of her work spoke to me. I find the way she uses everyday images to present a memorable, nostalgic quality incredibly effective and decided to incorporate this mundanity and ordinariness into my work. I also found Or Haji's piece, The Seabird Habitat, particularly inspiring due to its historical themes and exploration of unknown narratives. This is in reference to mass immigration to Australia due to Japanese imperialism. As well as this, the artist uses symbolism through the image of the seagull that is used to represent transversing borders, which I was inspired by to emphasise the inexplicitness of my work. Influenced by these artists, I took a photo shoot of everyday yet vintage objects. I photographed them using a photo booth and the images clearly focus on the object and explore the features of these vintage items for my later work. I also took inspiration from the artist Shinro Oteik. In particular, I found a series of his images depicting scribbled or destroyed letters interesting as it reminded me of blackout poetry. From this, I decided to experiment with blackout poetry and created a series of outcomes. I found these poems effective as they were simple, non-explicit, and a way of displaying emotions and themes that also incorporates the idea of repression or something being locked away. However, I also identified a series of issues in regards to poetry that I had to develop to improve my work. First, as I originally used a children's book with a more simple narrative, I decided that I had to use a more developed book in order to improve the narrative and effectiveness of my poems. I also decided that for my work I would like to include more vibrant colours compared to a simple and black design, as well as more imagery. Furthermore, I also identified that my work had to be less cliché and more figurative to improve. Taking these ideas, I created a series of more developed outcomes. To present my blackout poetry, I experimented with digital editing and transfer techniques. Ultimately, I determined that presenting it in a physical medium is more effective and the pages added a specific distinctness to the art. During my artist research, I was inspired by Grayson Perry. I found his use of ceramics in a more alternative way, including images and words compelling, and decided to combine the blackout poetry medium with ceramics. First, I attempted to transfer over already existing ceramics, however this came with many issues including contrast with the overlaying of the images and difficulty securing the transfer to the ceramics. As well as this, I found it difficult to create the vintage mundane atmosphere with this technique. To develop this, I decided to design my own ceramic plates in a more traditional style and display the poems separately to the plate on the back. Doing this would avoid clashing of the two designs and allow the two images to complement each other and structurally look more effective. I created a series of first sketches where I outlined important features I needed to add to my work, including separating the poems and designs so they don't contrast. At first, I took inspiration from my limited knowledge of Japanese ceramics and identified that natural patterns and blue or white designs were common. To understand the ceramics further, I researched two famous Japanese ceramic styles, Imariwe and Rakuwe. For my product, I was inspired by Imariwe as I found its historical natural elements effective. Major colours of Imariwe are blue and white, which I heavily incorporated in my work. However, an issue with Imariwe was the maximalist nature of the design. This is where I took inspiration from Rakuwe, a medium with more simple designs. Rakuwe also involves texture, which I incorporated in my project through etching onto the plates, as well as a large variety of colours, which led me to decide to use green due to its natural connotations.
In my work for my natural imagery, I decided to use flowers due to its large presence in Imari ware. I created a series of sketches of flowers that inspired my next plate design. I also photographed many flowers to attempt to better develop my image. To incorporate symbolism, I also researched Hanakotoba, the Japanese language of flowers, to fully understand the significance of the images I'm displaying in my work. From then, I began creating the bowl. I first practiced my design on slabs to see the effect of different techniques. This made me realize that using the slip for the flower design was ineffective as it was too difficult to create the precise design of the flowers. This led me to change to etching and use slip for the background. For my etching, I also directly copied from Japanese art in order to increase the authentic image of the work. From there, I decided to change the harsh painting in my sketches to softer brush strokes to complement the delicacy of the flowers. For my final piece, I decided to go with a white interior and a coloured background to highlight the centre part of the bowl where the flower image will be. After this, I continued developing my poetry. I took inspiration from Tom Phillips with the way I wanted to present my poems and the format I used. I also changed from using coloured pencils to watercolours as it increased my authentic image for my work. This is because coloured pencils were more difficult to make a precise and accurate drawing with. After that, to improve my poetry, I decided between three different types of books and weighed out the effectiveness of each of them. Ultimately, I decided to use a vintage book called Dream Days with a centre page more figurative narrative that is relatively unknown. This is because a more figurative book allows me to be less specific with my poems and helps me to avoid cliches. When it came to my final piece, I decided I wanted to use flowers as a key symbol in my work. I first decided that the main flower image on the plate should have a profound meaning. I chose Sakura due to its significance in Japanese culture and its symbolism of, of impermanence and beauty. This can be compared to the impermanence and beauty of life. I wanted to keep the theme of my poetry similar yet contrasting and chose to use a flower with a more profound and deep meaning. I used a white rose and a water lily. A white rose specifically represents loneliness, isolation and emptiness. It is often used in literature to represent unrequited love and feelings. A lotus flower can also represent unrequited love but is associated with delicacy and loneliness. From these symbols, I created a plate that I hope conveys the beauty and impermanence of life, yet underneath it, where a plate would traditionally be covered, the symbol of loneliness and grief, almost as though it's censored or untold as it's typically concealed. While for the front of the plate, I will consistently use the sakura design to represent life, for the poetry at the bottom of the plate, I have used different flowers with a distinct meaning to represent untold, locked away stories. I tested how this would look with a different bowl on my completed poem. I feel the outcome of this will be effective in my final piece without the edges of the poem. I created four poems, two containing the water lilies and two containing the white roses. For these poems, I ripped the edges to create an aged and hidden look, as well as to allow it to fit into the mould of the plate. While I was painting my smaller plates, due to the delicacy of the clay, one of them cracked. However, inspired by this, I decided to explore the art of kintsuki. Kintsuki is the action of repairing broken objects using gold. This process is meant to emphasize the beauty and imperfection and flaws. Using this art style would not only enhance my art's connection to Japanese ceramics, but also deepen the symbolism of my work.